Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to screen print with Puff Additive. We got our Puff Additive from Screen Print World using discount code CRP5. And for our t-shirt design, we're going for this kind of slightly subdued matte finish effect. And then it wouldn't be a puff video unless I showed you how to get a really high, thick puff on your design. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some variables and how to screen print a really nice high um, puff on your t-shirt designs. This is the t-shirt design that we're gonna be printing in our video today. We fund the YouTube channel through the sale of our Blind Maggot t-shirts. You can get your hands on one of these Blind Maggot shirts on our website and that's blindmaggot.co.uk. We give a massive £10 off for all of our squeegee viewers and all you need to do is enter squeegee as a discount code at checkout. In order to screen print with Puff Plaster Sol ink, you're gonna need a lower T mesh. That's in order to get lots of the particles and all the ink through onto the substrate. You need a lot of those down on the substrate so that it can actually have the chemical reaction and puff up, and those particles are quite large. So we don't wanna sieve them out, so a 43T mesh is perfect for that. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we just wanted to show you how puffy you could make your puff ink. So it's not what we actually want for our t-shirt design, but we wanted to show you how puffy ink can go. So we've actually chosen a completely different screen and that's a 21T screen. That's gonna deposit loads of ink. And we're also gonna use a design which is very thick and bulky in order to really show off what puff ink can do. The squeegee that we choose is going to be very important for this particular job because we want to deposit lots of the puff plaster sole ink onto the substrate. So we're opting for a softer blade and it's a lower durometer. So the durometer refers to the hardness of the blade and also its flexibility and how much ink it's depositing. So a nice low 60 durometer blade is going to be perfect for this job. When it comes to curing our ink, we're gonna be using the Big Buddy. This is a conveyor dryer and it's um, gonna allow the heat to really permeate through our ink and get it cured and puffed up. Today we're gonna to be using the Plastisol Puff Additive by Amex. It's probably good practice to keep within the same brand of ink. However, we're gonna use the Spot On Plastisol ink as the majority of the ink that we're gonna to deposit onto the shirt. Um, we're going to do it in a ratio of 20% of the additive to 80% of the spot-on plastol ink. And in order to get that ratio perfect, we're going to use a small digital scales. As this is plastol ink, we can treat it exactly the same as normal. So we're just going to use the Easy Way 701. Um, that's going to clean up the plastol ink really nicely as we can't use water to clean up this particular ink. The last thing you're gonna need is a nice high quality garment. So this one in particular is 100% organic cotton and it's got a good weight to it. And this is particularly important when printing with puff ink because if you had a very, very thin garment, you would emphasize and exaggerate the puckering and um, that the puff additive is gonna put onto your shirt. In this design for our Blind Maggot t-shirt, you can see that we're using line work and the effect that we're trying to get and achieve at the end is a matted out tactile feel to the ink. So we are gonna use the puff ink, but we're not gonna be using it in the way where it's super exaggerated and over the top. So um, we're gonna keep the line work thin and we are trying to get all of that detail in but we're not going to allow the puff to over exaggerate and blur any of the details so we're going to keep our design work as clean as possible. If we were trying to print something super exaggerated for example like this one um, we would over exaggerate the boldness of the lines so we'd thicken them out we might choose a really thick bold font such as this and even in this, you can see where the lines are thinner, 
the puff hasn't been able to achieve the total height that the really bold elements of the design are going to. So um, that's a really good example of you can build into your artwork these thick lines and they're going to exaggerate that puff effect even more. We want to mix up 100 grams of ink and you're supposed to put 20% of the additive in. So therefore we're going to put 20 grams of the additive and then we're going to top it up to 100 grams so we're going to have 80 grams of the jet black plaster ink. And that combination will give us the perfect ratio for our printing. Something you might notice when you're printing with puff additive is that when it actually rises, the, the surface area of the ink expands and that can lighten the colour that you first originally mixed. So that's something to consider that might make printing specific Pantone references very difficult. Um, but just have it in mind that the colour will lighten slightly. Um, there are things that you can do to maintain a better colour. So if you're printing onto dark garments, you might want to put in a white underbase. However, there's another little thing there where in our experience, we've discovered that when we're curing the Plastisol puff additive on top of an underbase, that it actually restricts the amount of puff that we can finally achieve. So um, it's kind of a compromise if you want to keep and maintain the colour a little bit better, you can put the underbase under there, but just have in mind that it might restrict the overall height that your puff achieves. When we're printing our own brand t-shirts, we often do the inside neck label last. However, for this one, I've chosen to quickly do the neck labels and then I'm going to turn the, turn the shirt around and do the big puff design on the back. That's because I don't want any extra heat getting on the puff once it's cured. I don't want it to like deflate and some people put the inside neck label design in with a heat press. So then I definitely want to make sure I'm not squishing my puff ink once it's printed. I've set this job up exactly the same as usual. So I've got everything nice and tight. I've got my snap, which is that distance between the substrate and the bottom of the screen. That's the nice little distance and it's even all the way around. I'm going to be printing it really quite large on the back of this t-shirt. So I've got that sturdy in place and I've got it stuck on the platen. The method that I'm going to use is I'm going to do my flood. So do my fill stroke. And then I'm going to print that layer down, making sure that I'm visually checking and making sure I'm clearing the mesh. I'm not putting an excessive amount of force. I just want the screen to, to kiss the shirt and, and jump back up. And then because I want to deposit quite a lot of ink down on this particular design, I'm actually just going to lift it, do another flood, and deposit one more layer, wet on wet, on the shirt. So visually I can see that I've cleared it all and even though it's black ink on a black shirt, I can kind of see the, the glossiness of the ink and it all looks pretty decent. So that's ready to go on the conveyor dryer and um, cure and then we'll see that puff effect. In a lot of designs, you might be printing puff next to standard plaster inks. So I think it's advised to be printing the other colours that don't require having puff additive in them first 
and then flashing them like normal in between. And then if you do have a puff layer, print that last. That just means that you're, you're in control of the variables of heat so that you're not prematurely puffing some parts of the ink um, to get them touch dry. So that all of that effect and the chemical reaction and the puffing is happening in the conveyor dryer, which is something that you can definitely control a lot more than underneath the flash dryer. If you notice, once that's fresh off the press, the ink colour is quite dark and it's this black on black effect that we're going for. However, we, we know that it's going to lighten up and appear a little bit grey when it comes through and then it will actually be recognisable as a design from a little bit of a distance. So it's important to let the heat get through the shirt in an even way. So I'm going to try and lay this down on the conveyor belt as flat as possible. We're treating this design like all of our other plastisol printing ink. So we're going to use the conveyor dryer, which is the big buddy. We just feel like this is a really reliable bit of kit and it just keeps everything super consistent down to the temperature reading coming off. You can dictate what the belt speed is and it's just once this is all set up and warm, we can keep the, the ink surface of the, of the shirt consistent all the way through and it's just been a brilliant bit of kit for us. We got ours from Screen Print World and we used our discount code, which is CRP5, which gives you a good chunk of change off your purchases from Screen Print World, from your big kit like this and the Cruiser, right the way down to your inks and squeegees. If you are trying to achieve a really high puff like this example, um, these are a few things that you can do to get there. So you could use a much lower mesh and deposit absolutely loads of ink. So we're doing that with a 21T mesh. So that's, the holes are much, much bigger and we're gonna let through a lot more ink. The other considerations are, like I've said a few times, is the, is the boldness of the design nice and chunky. And also we've coated this particular um, screen with high build emulsion and we've done lots of coats. I'd say this has probably about seven different layers coating it to build up that thickness or the emulsion over mesh ratio. So it's going to deposit it very thick. The actual mixture of the ink in terms of like percentages of like the additive is still the same. However, I'm just going to, I'm just going to flood it a little bit slower so that it really fills the, the openings of the screen and then I'm going to print it in exactly the same way. And I'm going to give it two layers just like before. And when that goes through the dryer you're going to notice it's much taller than, than the standard screen because it's depositing so much more ink down. The results for the back print are as expected, so you might notice that there's a slightly greyer look rather than pure black with the ink. Um, that's expected and also it's got that really nice tactile finish but it's not ridiculously high puff. Um, we've actually done a wash test on one that we did a couple of hours ago just to make sure and it washes perfectly fine just like um, all of our other plaster prints. Um, there is a, a couple of things to look out for when you're curing your ink. Um, you can over cure it, you can overheat it and then the, the visual on it when it's over cured is kind of like a glossy sheen. Also if you're printing larger areas it can kind of like dapple a little bit. So just look out for those and keep your, your, the surface of the ink temperature at 165 degrees. We've kept this particular design very simple, however, if you do have an appetite for learning about how to do half tones and underbases and just um, slightly more difficult puff printing, 
then let us know in the comments and we'll make a specialist kind of advanced puff printing video for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe so you get notified of our next video. Um, ask any questions in the comments below, including if you'd like to see any more in-depth videos on puff printing. And remember, you can pick up these shirts on the Blind Maggot website and you can get a massive £10 off if you use the discount code squeegee at checkout. Um, also remember that pretty much everything that we've used in the video today can be purchased from the Screen Print World in the UK and you can use our special discount code which is CRP5 to get some money off for your studio.